when you're going into that situation, like we said, it's worth 300. You know it needs work. They've had it for a long time. So now we're back into what is that? It's 90, $210,000. Let's say you've estimated that this property needs about $50,000 in renovation. Okay. So that's $160,000 is, is what you can offer, but you still got to make some money. Maybe you want to make 10. So now it's 150 is your maximum offer. But you know that they bought the property for, you know, I don't know, let's say they bought the property for 100,000, however long ago. I'm just throwing numbers out there. So they're going to make some money either way it goes, but maybe they just need to get out of it, right? Or maybe they don't need to get out of it and they don't really have the pain. There's not enough pain for them to have to get out of this deal meaning they're not hurting for money. They can hold on to it. Maybe the property's rented and it's bringing them in some kind of income, something they're used to. Maybe you know you could fix it up and get those rents up a bit. Maybe you have a different exit strategy altogether, but they are perfectly content. They'd like to sell it, but they want to get their number. So now we have to figure out what that number is. So the one question that I always go back to when I'm into that situation, I say, okay, listen, I can't offer you, if I'm being honest, I can't offer you a cash price today. I can't offer you any more than 150,000. That's like maximum. I wouldn't even start there. I'd probably start at about 135, 140. But I can't give you any more than 150,000. And this is a conversation that I have with them if I know they're not going to take this 150 because of the conversation we have. Like saying, look, I'm not just going to give it away. I got to get at least, you know, a couple hundred thousand for it. If they're in the ballpark of where I might want to be, but not as a cash buyer. I'm not a cash buyer at $200,000. I'm a cash buyer at 150. I might, depending on what my exit strategy is, I may be a cash buyer at 160. Why? Because maybe I want to keep this and add it to my own portfolio. Maybe I have no intention on wholesaling it. Maybe I want to turn it into an Airbnb, or maybe I want to do lease options or wraparound mortgages, whatever, right? Maybe that's my exit strategy. Maybe I want to hold it because when the market does turn around in a couple, you know, two or three years, now I will be able to, you know, I'll have it, get it renovated. I'll have it, clean it up when it's time. And I can put it on the market for full or very close to full retail value, right? It just depends on what your exit strategy is. But if your exit strategy is to purely wholesale this, you're going to let them know, hey, 150 is the most I can offer. It's the absolute most I can offer. I can't offer you any more. So the first question that I ask them, really, it's the only question I ask them, you know, but it can come out in a couple of different ways. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, you know, I can get this deal done for you, but are you open to a creative financing solution? Are you open to having a conversation about what that may look like? And then we go from there. Now, depending on, you know, who you're calling, they may not know anything about creative financing at all, like nothing, nothing at all, right? So they're going to ask you, well, what does that mean? What do you mean? Am I open to a creative finance solution? You're going to run into people that don't want to do that at all. They're like, absolutely not. I'm not interested in it at all. I've heard about it. It's a scam. Isn't that where they're going to take my house? I just sign it up. No, you know, it's not a scam. And you don't want to get into a situation where you're explaining your position. You just say, listen, no, it's not a scam. These are real deals. Okay. It's a real process. It's a real solution. We close with attorneys. In every case, you know, and depending on the situation, you know, if you own it outright, I mean, you're going to have a mortgage, you know, you're going to have a deed of trust. If we're splitting it up a little bit, you're going to have a lien on the property. We're not trying to leave you holding the bag here. We're a real company with references. We do this. This is what we do. All right. And you keep it simple like that. We'll get into objections in a little while. But the main question you're going to ask them is, are you open to a creative financing solution to your problem? I have a series of solutions that I can present to you depending on, you know, the kinds of terms that we come up with. Let me play you a little bit of a clip of something that I did. It's the same call we were listening to last week, but I want to get into it. So we're I think about eight minutes in on this one. Can you hear me there, Art? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Thanks. Thanks for that. All right. So yeah, you said you're in it over 20, you know, you well, just over 20. So you, you just want to get 25. And, yeah, yeah. And you want to make yeah. sure that you can get 25. I'm sure you're getting, yeah. you know, 17s, 15s. I'm sure you're getting those offers. Yeah, yeah, 13s and all kinds of stuff. Like, yeah, 
Yeah. Because I'm looking at them. I'm, I'm absolutely looking at them. So let me ask you something, man. On a relatively short-term basis, if we could come up to some significant terms, short term, that didn't allow you to have to, you know, or require you to do any repairs, any of that stuff at all, put a couple dollars in your pocket and I can give you your price. I can yeah. give you your price and we can come up to some really minor terms. Can we make something happen? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it depends on what you're talking about. Okay. Because, you know, what you're talking about, because I, because I, it's like, it's my, it was my, that'll be, I'm going to say, this, that was my second home I bought, because this, this is the first home I bought out here in Fayetteville. Right. And I bought them at the same time. Got you. So, Got you. You know, it's a dream of mine of being in real mm-hmm. estate, but I also know to be in real estate, you need money. For sure. So, so the the thing that I'm proposing to you is, do you, do you have a loan on it? Because I don't see that you have any loans. No, there's no loan on it. It's pretty clear. Yeah. So <clears throat> the way I'm looking at it here is we can do a couple different things for you. One is I can give you the price in which you're requesting. I can give you that. No negotiations on that at all. I'm with you a thousand percent because that's what you need. And instead of sitting around and waiting three years before the market gets better to get it, you know, yeah. be- best we can lock it in right now. And second, even locking in that price, I can also, over a relatively short term, you know, make sure that you're getting, you know, consistent monthly payments. We put a terms deal together. It's called a seller financing option, and we close it with an attorney. You know, you'll we pay for uh, mortgage insurance for you. We put property insurance. We make sure that you are the loss payee in the event that you know god forbid the house burned down the insurance company would pay you directly so it would be a net net gain for you not a loss an absolute gain and i pay for those things they do not come out of your pocket at all does that sound of interest to you yeah okay well here's what i'd like to do uh what i I mean you're here in in fayetteville so what i'd like to do is i'm going to call my partner you know you'll get an opportunity to meet okay so you see that that's how those kind of deals play out, right? I go right into, are you open to a creative finance solution? And his only comeback to me was, depends on what you're talking about, you know? I'm giving you everything you need to find success as a real estate investor. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and like this video. See you later.